We saw Gaussian law in integral form. We saw Gaussian law in differential form. And this allows us to calculate a lot of interesting uh, parameters. For instance, we can do the entire distribution and find what is the scale arising from the child distribution. My one class is I give you the field and ask you what is the source of the charge that we use the control law. So also the integral form.
in front of you. So the time varying fields, different things happen because for time varying fields, energy has to be put in. You have to put in energy to create the field. Of A. I'm taking for infinity, 
So when I don't mention me, and I say me, it is understood. So this will allow me not to calculate from problem without getting confused. I'll show you the next slide.
then dr plus dr, no one way. So if you need d to be, p is r, okay, there are still few components of r. So the potential for any point outside the, the ball of charge is q over 4 pi epsilon over r. Respect to infinity, of course. But that is how we do it. First, we have to do the two region. What do I do? Feel the point P, but P is outside. Now, the next question is what would be the potential at the surface of the charge? R is equal to A. So, if this is valid for R better than equal to A, put R equal to A, the potential of the point here is Q over 4 pi over R A. Okay. So it depends on where is your P. If your P is outside, you start from infinity to R. If your P is inside the ball, you start from infinity to A, or to A to the surface, and from A to the inside. But the inside there is no field. So this is the detail, these are the details of what you have done. How we got the result, you can see. So I want to find what is P with respect to infinity, and my P now is inside. My A, so R is not A, R is not A. So R is not A, as I mentioned to you, always is with infinity. Your P starts from infinity. Okay, it goes all the way up. The expression is given by Q over 4 pi of R squared for this region. From infinity to A, this is the expression for the field. When you reach the top of the charge, now you must go from R less than A and you won't say you want to go to the center. So we don't go to the center. In, when you can see this makes no difference. Anywhere I go inside, the field is zero. So therefore, what, what is telling you this beautiful result is that in a hollow conductor, which is charged, the potential inside is everywhere the same. So whether I go, my integration go from here, infinity to R, R is outside, I'll be A. A to R, where R can be 3 quarter A, or half A, or 0, it's always 0. So inside the sphere, inside the charge, the contribution, the integral is always 0. Can you see from there? So what it means is that, this is the result. In a hollow conductor which is charged, or in any conductor which is charged, the region inside the conductor is at the same potential. This one you know already what? That is why you never take a, a screwdriver, hold the metal, put in the mains. You get a shock, you kill. Same potential. So the potential inside the ball of charge is the same everywhere. Because you can put R. From A to R, A to A by 2, R to 0, still 0. <coughs> now, another beautiful result again. You can see that inside a hollow conductor, inside a conductor, a hollow conductor, the electric field is 0. We found already, right? R less than A is 0. And the potential difference is not 0. So that is why Mr. Michael Faraday was very he was a very brave man. He tell them he <laughs> didn't uh, He tell them that he told them, told his uh, spectators, I will think he's gonna think all of charges. Big sphere, metal. Okay? This is charged up, this is connected to a voltage of maybe 1,000 volts. Okay? Battery 1,000 volts. You got a small door here, a small ladder here. A small door, you went inside there and sit on a chair inside there. Mr. Faraday, very brave man. You want to see this out there? I see, I'm not making it too high. I'll kill him, I'll kill him. Uh, make it uh, 200 volts. So he went up there, at the time he couldn't push his hand over there, 200 volts. So he went inside the, the thing closed the door, made a conductor. 
in being a pro? He says, there's no field. She's true, what? there's no field as a conductor. But, but, his potential of the body with respect to ground is 200 volts. So when he open the door, come out, he better be careful, don't touch anything which is grounded, you're going to get killed. The last call is going to throw to him. So somebody has to come and pat him with some, something to remove the charges and they can come out. So the, the electric field is at zero, but the potential come out, raise for this. Now that is why, I think, I don't know whether you watch documentary, high voltage line in the US, <coughs> high voltage line, <coughs> 22 kV, even see up, 22 kV. High voltage. They line up, they, they, a certain tower, very high up. Sometimes there are some faults on the line. They cannot switch off the power. Everything will go crazy. Cinema will close down, restaurant will close down, everything will close down. So, the repairman go by helicopter. Go by helicopter. Okay, helicopter. And then he goes on there, he sits on the wire to fix it. He's okay, he's alright, of course. He, he wears boots, he's isolated, but he's okay. But, when he's finished doing his job, he cannot just jump in a helicopter. He has to be discharged slowly, 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 slowly. Then he can go and tell the helicopter, the helicopter will go down, discharge, go to the charge. Otherwise, when he jump the helicopter, he will take the helicopter for everybody. Because of the high voltage like that, his body has accumulated the charges. And if that's something, low potential. Hmm. Right. So that those of us who are efficient, so the vision playing around with the repair, they don't want to even switch off the power, they just did a very nonchalant, very happy go lucky. Okay, so, so in a hollow conductor, potential is constant everywhere inside there, but there is no field. Electric field is zero, doesn't mean potential is zero. That is the point I want to make. When the potential, when the field is zero, E equals to zero, does not automatically mean V equals to zero. No. Doesn't mean that. E is zero, the potential is negative. It's constant, you can see what? E equal to minus that V. So to get zero, V can either be zero or a constant. <coughs> so be careful. You cannot make those uh, very blind conclusions. Because the field is zero, the potential is zero. No. <coughs> can be zero or it can be a constant. The function of a constant is zero. Okay? <coughs> so this one I'm not going to ask you to worry too much about it, about the uh, formula for energy stores, how B dot E or how Q dot Z this one is. Whether you find the energy store using the field or you use the QB, get the same answer. So now we come to something very, very dry and abstract. This is something to do with so-called boundary condition. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because we need the result. This is a whole boundary condition. For example, if I have the surface of interface of two media, uh, two media, okay, and one of the medium, media, media is a conductor. Is a conductor. This is free space, okay, and for some reason there is a field existing in the air. There is no field inside the conductor. You can show that the field has to be ninety degrees to the conductor surface. But you can see, it makes sense, because the field is static. That E field has got a component parallel to the conductor surface, tangential, and no more grid. Okay? So if you have a component of E parallel to the surface, so it means that the grid is of potential. Therefore, this surface of the conductor 
has got a great deal of potential, means the potential changes. But it cannot be. A conductor is an equipotential region. So therefore, all points on this surface have got the same potential. Therefore, the tangential component must be zero. <coughs> same potential, gradient of potential in view field, field along the surface must be zero. When there is a charge, therefore the field has no choice, has to be that in the green. So this is the first boundary condition. The tangential component of the field and the conductor must be zero. Charges on top there, therefore E by default, no more, cannot be zero, it's not zero. It exists because of charges or E by charges on the field. Okay? So this is the next body for the come up. So question is, if I give a charge distribution on a conductor surface, at any point, if I give a charge density, can I find the E no more to it? Yes, of course we can as I'll show in the next uh, slide, using Gauss's law. Okay. <coughs> so the proof we are not interested in the initial, I guess, to be physically the conductor. So this one here, This is a conductor. In a conductor, there is zero field. If E is zero is a conductor, as we know, because conductor E is a gradient of potential. In a conductor, there is no gradient of potential. Therefore, E minus gamma is zero. If E is zero, D minus is zero, because D is a constant epsilon than E. Okay. So the question is: Suppose it's charged up. We've seen already the tensile component must be zero because if it were not zero, the charges current would flow. It doesn't stack it. So the question now, can we link the charge distribution on the conductor with the field? Yes, we can. So we draw a small tension surface, Gauss's law, closed surface, top, bottom, cylinder, at this point, of course, at this point. The top surface, if there's positive charges, the dn come out, d normal mode of d. Bottom surface, there is no flux coming out because it is a conductor. No charge, therefore no flux. A flux parallel with a small cylinder, no outward flux. Something which is parallel and with zero component. So therefore, out of these three places, there is only one contribution. Contribution Bn and the area delta S. Plus zero, plus zero in the bottom. That must be because the charge that grows, the charge that grows by this cylinder. The charge density distribution is sigma s, sigma q, q, total charge q divided by sigma s, so the q sigma times delta s, another, another. The elective the d normal, the d is equal to q, okay, over some uh, q divided by delta s, finally, I can find out the charge density, q over delta s, finally, d, the charge density, sigma, related to the dn, so you can see we have the dn, the normal component, D tangential is zero. If E D is zero, D D is zero. E tangential is zero. Therefore, D D is zero because D D and E D are connected to a constant zero. In this partial surface, D N times delta S is equal to sigma times delta S. Therefore, you can see. I can find that the part that D vector D N is sigma or so if it is air, epsilon naught is one. So the electric field is sigma over epsilon naught. 
if it is some other directive, some other thing, just here, you can put values, so you can see here. At the top, at the surface of the conductor, here, the given field, the given field, or more to it, you can see there's no thing to make for me. So therefore, we have a conductor, I put it in some field, if I know the charge distribution on the conductor, it can vary. I can find at once what the field can do better on this on this uh, relationship. So the field is given normal, is given by sigma or sigma or sigma. Once I know the medium of the field. So we come up with two, we come up with two integrals on this one. Okay. That the tensile component of an electric field to a conductor is zero. By default, if the charges on it, it will be 90 degrees. So those of you who want to read about the proof, the proof I'll give you a very physical here, that's page here, because if there is no gradient of potential on the conductor, the potential will be zero. But for those of you who want to prove it mathematically, the same thing. You draw a small ring and then draw a small loop. Do the work law, integral E dot D equal to zero, A to B, B to C, C to D, B to A. Okay? So you do the same thing, you find out that the contribution of the potential component is zero. You don't have to go through all these things, you just by simple reasoning. If a surface is a conductor, is a region is equal potential. Potential equal potential is a potential constant. Gradient of potential is the same by electric field on the surface, same, same potential, therefore there is no electric field on the surface. So no need to prove what is thing is your mess, but for simple reasoning we can find out. Now we move further, we look at another result. But when it comes to use this only condition, I will I will reiterate it to remind you what we are using. I will recap of this. So the picture I am going to show you now is what I already shown you but I'm going to do it again. So you have a field, a certain region that is the exterior. You put a good conductor, a ball of, of metal, conductor, copper, or aluminum, whatever it is, automatically you find that this field is distorted. Of course, this picture will hold. If the board is made of plastic. 
plastic. Get the bottom of that plastic. The food is still inside there. We got the bottom of plastic. I got no free charges. To be in use. D1 
one, D, <coughs> flux density vector tangential to the surface, <coughs> it epsilon one, ET one, similarly for DT two. I don't like this picture now. You want to connect D one and D two. In this picture here, <coughs> you see D one, theta one, D two, theta two, the lowest small Gaussian surface. Apply Gaussian law with small Gaussian volume here, surface, full surface. D N one coming out, which is D one cos theta one times delta S out. On the bottom, see my D two going this way is minus minus D two cos theta two times delta S. Parallel sides, nothing. So therefore, I have sigma s surface and surface. But of course, that sigma s in the two media is a charge and been placed there so by somebody in the free charge. And normally, when you have two dielectric, there's no charge placed down there, so it's charge is zero. <coughs> Unless you put a free charge down there, your right hand side always zero. In other words, <coughs> If you have two dielectrics, no charge in between, no free charges, then the normal component of D are preserved. The normal component of D is the DN1 with DN2. Okay, so therefore you can see. If on the surface of two dielectric, in the two dielectric here, there is no free charge, nobody can charge there, it will be zero. So DN1 with DN2. In other words, the normal component is preserved. Now, this boundary condition explains why is it that when we apply Gauss's law, we ignore all the <coughs> charges and not free charges. I'll show you now. Simple demo. Remember, free charges you can move. Charge free charges can move. Charges in a dielectric cannot move. So in this case here. <coughs> so I have a capacitor. 20 volts. Zero volt. <coughs> but of course, please, when I put 20, zero, not always, but I, can, I could have put, I could have put uh, minus uh, 10, minus 30, if I want to. Okay, the, the, the argument doesn't change. So I use positive just to I use to positive. But this is okay. This is also possible. Work. It's always a relative one. Potential relative. Okay? Now, suppose inside the dielectric, I have, inside the capacitor, I have two dielectrics, for instance. Two this is the interface. This is the top dielectric. It's on R1, top, halfway through. And then I have it's on R2 as well, I'm different. So the point I want to make is that when one applies the bus is wrong, because of these charges here, because of this um, difference of potential of charges created on the positive and negative plate, relative to negative, therefore your electric field created. <coughs> therefore, the electric field is created. Again, electric field point direction of decreasing potential. Electric field point like this. This direction, this way. But since I have a mixed dielectric, if I want to say this is E, I will be wrong because the dielectric, the electric field will also take into account the polarizing charges. Only thing that doesn't take into account polarizing charges, take into account only free charges, is the D. That's how we saw already, I'm going to show you here. So the one that we want <coughs> is, <coughs> is this one. So here, this is D and 1 in this region. This is D and 2 in this region. 
we we proven already that if there are no free charges on the surface, d n one equal to d n two, or we prove d n one minus d n two is equal to sigma s. Sigma s there is no free charge at the interface between two dielectric. Of course, you have free charges on the conductor, conductor, but not on the dielectric. Therefore, you can see that when I draw the picture, d n one, d n two, I must draw d n one, d d n, same thing. Dn. So Dn is same as Dn. Dn one is equal to Dn two is equal to Dn. It's already. This is zero because there are no free charges on the on the on the interface between the two ions. No free charges. So that is why when you apply, we prefer to apply Gauss's law using free charges. Because all these funny charges down there, polarizing charges, we don't care. Because so long as we use D, not E. So how we use integral D dot ds is equal to rho three dv rho three three. We don't have, don't have an E here. It's D. We use D means D n one is D n two is D. <coughs> So what I mean, the number of dielectric I have, it is the same. D n one, D n two, same. But now let me show you the picture. Now if I draw E n one and E n two, I will have them. Same picture. I'm just going to use it now. Twenty volts. You get the two volts. I be something in the center. Dielectric. So now again, I have. Positive charges on top here, negative charges here, no problem. And now I'm going to draw electric field. <coughs> If I draw electric field, this one will be E n one. Here will be E n two in the region number two. E n two. This one R uh, one. Okay. Now we have just we have just proven already that <coughs> E n one is not equal to E n two. Only d n one equal to d n. Okay, we see already, right? So d n one equal to d n. Proven already. Or e n one epsilon of epsilon one e n one is epsilon two e n two. From here, okay, e n one not equal to e n two. Okay. You agree with this? You agree with this? Because of this. So therefore, I cannot say the whole thing is e n one. No nonsense. Cannot be wrong. Completely wrong. So that is why when we use Gauss's law, we never use E. We use D. When we use D, we don't care what happens in the interface. We don't care because by right, if I'm going to show you what happens now, why E and one, E and two not the same? We've proven already. But if you look at it now, three charges on the bed here. Three charges here. Okay. You will create. Polarizing charges minus plus minus plus minus plus minus. <coughs> so maybe <coughs> minus plus go together minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus and so on. So therefore, we can see at this point here the difference between the two normal com normal components of D or uh, uh, E. We got E and one is not in the way. We'll create some in between here some polarization charges, polarization charges, which we are not interested in. New charges, which are totally different from totally different from Q free from free charges. Free charges this can move. So this one, three charges, totally different. So therefore, if you take, if you blow this up here, you will see in between here some charges here. These charges cannot move. <coughs> They cannot move. But we will make E and one not E and two. I've shown you here. D and one or D and two. D and one and E one is E and one. E two is on E and two. You can see here one cannot be E and two unless this one is going to be E and two. 
in that case, they're doing this. So you can see the normal component to the interface with the two dialectics are not equal. Because they're not equal, that is why engineers say, no, we're not going to work with the normal component, we're going to work with D. D means no problem, it's the same D to work, because continuity, there's no feature at the interface, they're on top here at the bottom here, but there's nothing in, in, in the interface, therefore D will take care of it easily. But if I want to use E, sorry, I have to formulate this in terms of the charges in the dielectric, formulate this, and then do some other work. So we do not use electric field, we also go use D dielectric, we use displacement, <coughs> which is flux density. <coughs> okay. So this makes that's a, that's proof to you that we cannot EN1 not equal to EN2, I cannot go EN1 to the same, cannot different. But D can, EN1 to EN2, I can go one line and do everything I want to do. <coughs> so it's not proof of D. ET1 equal to ET2, ET1 is DT1 over epsilon 1, DT2 is epsilon, <coughs> ET2 over epsilon 2, and you equate because of the value of epsilon. Now, we're going to see now how to calculate the capacitance. What is capacitance? Capacitance is encountered everywhere, in high frequency circuit, everywhere, for storing charges. In push-pull circuits, in tank circuit, oscillator circuit, everywhere. Because they can uh, store charges, they can charge. 
So the question now we move on is how to calculate the capacitance given to <coughs> system of conductors. Of course, power brake capacitor is very simple. But now in general, how do you get how do you define the capacitance? Capacitance has got a <coughs> definition, definition Q over D. So the capacitance, capacitance, capacity to store charges. For a spherical capacitor, okay, this A, okay, we will find out the potential with respect to infinity is Q over 4 by epsilon naught A, that's not over, the integration, okay, the voltage. So Q over D give you 4 by epsilon A. So the capacitance of a, of a sphere, of radius A, say in air, is simply equal proportional to the radius. The larger the radius, the more charges you can store. It's obvious, right? Yeah. So the capacitance of a spherical capacitor, say medium air, is given by 4 by epsilon A. <coughs> now, if the capacitor is coated with wax, it's a noise, say 3 or 4, so now, look carefully now. Capacitance defined as Q upon D, meaning that how many coulombs the system of conductors can store per unit volt. Okay? So the unit is farad, automatic value, and the capacitance depends on the geometry. But the capacitance depends on the geometry, we're talking about. Linear capacitors. Some of you have some kind of character diode where the capacitor has no voltage. Or these are non linear systems. This is the linear system. <coughs> so, how do we proceed? Is that okay, everybody? This one, Q, we have, we have one V, just now we found out. We just now calculated the potential at the given distance R. And the field, R less than A, R less than A. Then we find the potential at the Surface A integral from minus E dot dr, E dr dr from infinity to the point R to A. Okay, inside there is nothing, so the answer is 4 pi epsilon naught A, Q over that. So Q over V gives you 4 pi epsilon naught A. Just divide, cos by divide. Okay. So now let's look at the picture to show you in general what we are doing. So the general method of calculating capacitance is <coughs> we assume a charge distribution, for example this one here. We, we have we have uh, two conductors, obviously conductors are conductors, conductors capacitor over the conductors. A and B, okay. So if you put a charge of plus Q on this conductor A, the red one here, the positive charges on the surface, automatically you can conserve some charges, the negative charges will appear on the negative one, T B. You notice that how I draw a field line, nothing increases the conductor of this. Because it's the potential. This is VA, expect infinity, this is VB, expect infinity. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to put a charge of plus Q in a positive plate, for the wall. Calculate the electric field arising from B, any point in between. Calculate the potential difference between the two, and divide by the other. So, we assume the charge is there, and then divide by the other. So, just now we have proven already that. If the charge, if this charge distribution is sigma s coulomb per meter square, okay, then you can find out what the d. D was given as sigma s. This one find out the charge, and therefore I can find what is the <coughs> what is the uh, <coughs> total dielectric. What is the total? Knowing the end, my last word, over already, same as sigma. Knowing the end, my 
Yen, si vous m'en avez pas mal. So we move further. Now we get result. So B A minus B B is minus B B equal to B dot B L. B A B B B A minus B A B is equal to B to A B. This is general. I mean, I think it's not. It's not. Uh, <coughs> So capacitor is Q over voltage. Q was given by integral of VDS on the plate here, positive plate, which is same as integral E naught times E N DS here, divided by V A minus V B, which is here. Okay. So if we increase sigma n times, E also we increase by n times. Okay. Therefore, no change. So we create this equation and change. So therefore, the capacitance doesn't depend on the actual charge of potential. It depends on the ratio. Now, let's see now the calculation case now. So we assume a charge. If we draw the conductor. Assume a given charge, the conductor, capital the density of charge, Gauss's law, capital D, have we found D by E, have we found E, capital E dot DL, this is load charge on the positive plate, potential of <coughs> A respect to B, divide one by the other. But of course, as we said before, capacitance, conductors deal only with free charges, no driving charges, free charges. Charges that can move on the conductors. So therefore, I have a system of conductors uh, dielectric between. You can have all kind of charges on the dielectric. No concern for us because we're working with D. We don't care about the charges. We only talk about D on the plate on the conductor. That's it. The rest we don't care. No, because in a sense you can see the D vector D D is our not is our not that E is blind to the the charge on the dielectric. You cannot see those charges on the dielectric. You cannot see them. It goes them completely. But E will not ignore them. You have to take into account that that's how you don't use it. So, you have your Q, to the density. Class of law, you have your D first, and then E. Okay, always you have your D first, and then E. And then E dot L, and E dot Finally, it's the same thing. Epsilon naught, epsilon naught, and D, DDS, over minus this. Again, you can see that if I increase epsilon naught, obviously, capacity will be obvious. If I increase epsilon naught, <coughs> in a sense, I'm increasing the amount of polarization charges that are electric. So the amount of charges that you're storing is more and more. So let's look, uh, let's look at this. Uh, Simple derivation, as I said here. Net, chew, square, close, three <coughs> charges. All of the charges are gone. Three charges are charges that can carry electricity, that can move. You have a fluorescent tube, what's the light? The plasma, the ionized gas down there are three charges because they can carry electricity, light, they can switch the energy. So these are three charges. Free charges. Hmm? Oh, sorry, you see? Okay. So, <coughs> so we must use free charges <coughs> on the conductors. All the rest you don't care because they don't enter the calculation so long as you need. Now, you might think that. Doesn't matter because D, D is the same as epsilon naught, epsilon naught, and E. So why bother? It's only constant. But of course, in some cases, your epsilon naught can be a function of position, as one of the questions that we draw your epsilon naught is a function of height. So therefore, you cannot find E directly, you might find D, because if the pin is positive and then negative pin here, the dielectric has got the epsilon naught, it varies with, with, space, with distance inside the plate. Then when you use D, as I told you before, the 
and he is blind to those charges in the negative field. He can only see the charges on the plane. But if you use E, E will have to take into account all these funny charges in the negative field. Why do you want to complicate your life? When you have some plus something which is easier. Okay, so let's look at this picture first, and then I'll show you the example where if you use E, you are stuck. You cannot go. No go. So in this picture, you have already better make it more three-dimensional. And I added a coordinate system Y up positive. To show you how it is done systematically correctly. So the area of the pit is A. This is the y-axis, this is the origin O here. Origin O here. <clears throat> so I assume that positive plate at the bottom, positive. So positive, negative, therefore electric field go up. So therefore electric field vector, the D is in the direction of y, a y vector. Again here, on the, I'm assuming zero fringing, meaning that I don't care about the field outside, only the field space. Provided that D is spacing much less on to the dimension of the linear dimension of the field. The conductor on top, conductor at the bottom, is some thickness. So if the total charge on the bottom conductor positive is Q, the area is A, the total density is Q per A coulomb per meter square, surface area. Similarly on top will be minus Q per A. So with Gauss's law, I draw a small Gaussian surface called closed Gaussian surface. D is coming out. D and delta S. The D has to be uniform everywhere. And this, on, on the edge of the conductor, on the edge of the surface is parallel, no outward flux. And the bottom inside the conductor is zero flux. Therefore, D delta S plus zero plus zero equal to root and delta S. Therefore, the charge density is simply called D. Of course, we know that. <coughs> But of course, these are in the y direction they chosen like this here. So therefore, now I got E. E is rho, what is that, what is that, ah, assuming it is constant. <coughs> so the potential difference, again, is given by V positive plate, respect negative plate, is minus integral negative to positive, V A, V, V to A, E down here, substitute, okay, you can see that indeed, dl is ay dy, ey is ey, subscript y, then ay, dot dot, we need to substitute, integral 0 to d. The bottom plate, top plate y is equal to d, top plate y is uh, bottom plate is 0, here, yeah. bottom plate, uh, top plate is d, substitute is answer is positive. Now, if I, if I fumble, make a mistake, I might end up with voltage of the plus aspect in to the top as negative. Obviously, I'm wrong. Fatal error already means you have got the whole thing mixed up. So the potential of the positive plate, respect negative plate, as shown by as used here, must be positive. But if you get an answer which is negative, something's wrong somewhere. I Maybe mean, you are you are cock up one of these expressions, you haven't got it right. So therefore, I know what is voltage of the positive respect negative, I get finish already. And this can be generalized, you know already. Epsilon naught, epsilon naught R, A upon D. Proportional epsilon naught, proportional to A, D. This is the details of what you do. <coughs> so whatever you do, let's make sure you do the right steps. Gracias. 
questions, you get the right answer, correct. But I follow the same instance, B plus minus, minus integral minus two plus. Let, let, let the linear take care of itself. Take care of themselves, you get the right answer. But if you start fiddling here, fiddling there, you the wrong answer. Wrong answer, then you, then you don't know what to do. So whatever you do, make sure you know exactly what you want to do. Simply guess here, guess there, try this, try that. Look at the answer, change the sign, change the sign there. That's not allowed. Let's just see. Let's just give you some example before we take some break. Okay. Let's just So you put capacitor plate again. Capacitor plate, conductor. So, the same sign of R here happens to be say, know, 20 exponential square root y. Y direction. Y. y equal to 0, y is equal to d. If you want, you can swap if you want to. I don't, I don't, I don't mind. So this is positive plate. This is negative plate. This distance is d again. So to calculate the capacitance c, I have to set some capacitor q, give rise to rho s over a, a of the plate, Coulomb per meter square. Similarly, I get D on top here. I have the rho S here, positive. My rho S here, negative. So now, Q, Q open. All this, all this. <coughs> v, all this, A, B. So we have to calculate Q over A, B. Sorry, positive was there. When do we proceed? Just now we show really. We know the charge, that's it, so from Q, we have got charge density, rho S. Charge density, rho S, Coulomb Gauss's law. We get D, not E, D plus. Having a D, we get E. Having a D, we get V, A, B. QED. So now let's look at the first step here. I'm drawing a surface here. So this is dy, normal term dy. So dy times delta s. So bottom there's nothing. Outside there's nothing. Plus 0 plus 0 is equal to charge density, which is rho s times delta s. Again, this gives you dy equal to rho s. <coughs> okay, but now I want dy. Dy is dy upon epsilon, epsilon, which is dy over 20 ey. So I get rho s upon 20 ey moles per meter. <coughs> I got e already. I can find the potential difference. Vab is given by, don't forget, as e dot here minus integral b to a, e dot dl. dl is positive, is ay and dy. You vector ay up. This is my origin here. <coughs> this is minus integral at b, y is equal to zero, uh, d. At a, y is equal to zero. e was given by this fellow. Around ay, so this dot on this will basically go rho s 20 e minus y on top, okay, times dy. Now you continue. So finally, do the integration, you get c is q upon d. But notice the step, we went to d, not e. If I've got to 
E will toggle it. Because if you use E, the formula, the correct formulation of Gaussian law involving E has got no SR not there. It got SR not. In the right hand side has got Q free plus Q a dielectric. We don't know what the Q is dielectric. The dielectric is very messy. 20 E Y exponential Y.